I really like this tank and it is a big favorite for many Green Aqua Gallery visitors and also it's a big favorite for many YouTube viewers as well. We have a total of four videos about uh, this tank. Two of them will show you, will teach you how I did this and two of them are cinematic videos which uh, are just for your enjoyment and inspiration. By the way, Happy New Year! This is the first video of Green Aqua. Thanks for all the support in uh, 2021. And I wish you many, many good entertainment and nice videos in the coming year. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. On this very rainy, cold, dark, Hungarian winter day, I'm gonna do something that I like probably the most besides creating a planted tank, I'm gonna do a maintenance. Oh, and by the way, I have no idea how this tank looks right now because obviously I've been passing by it in the past weeks, but I didn't check it on purpose. So we have the maintenance experts of Green Aqua who are doing regular weekly water changes and Ozzy, a very professional Green Aqua team member, has been trimming it. But I didn't criticize it, I didn't give my opinion, I didn't praise it, I didn't talk to him at all about what he should do about it. So let's assume that this is like a regular maintenance session here. And uh, this is also a good opportunity for me to reflect a little bit on the nine points of the flow theory that I expressed in one of the previous uh, episodes of the Green Aqua YouTube video series. And we're going to talk about flow and we're going to talk about why maintenance is so relaxing and so disconnecting from your everyday life and why will it give you a lot of pleasure and joy in your everyday activities. So the first point, the first necessity of experiencing the flow feeling is to have a clear goal. So what is my goal with this maintenance session? Okay, I've got two clear goals with this. First one, I want to finish by, <laughs> say, like two hours, which the camera crew will probably appreciate. That's, that's not the real goal, so here come the two other more important goals. The first goal is to take the tank back to its original status, to its original creator's intent. The second goal is to observe nature and see where the tank has evolved and in which points the tank is better than the original concept and just let that go. If I manage to revert some parts back to the original and other parts, <laughs> then it's perfect, right? This round perfect thing. <laughs> Anyways, now the moment of truth. I gotta turn back see what's happening. Wow, well, <laughs> this is what the second point is, instant feedback. <laughs> I've got the instant feedback guys, so I'm going to tell you what that instant feedback is right now. Right, so let's, uh, let's see what we have to do about this, this maintenance session. Well, the first thing that pops out is those grayish rocks. And I don't like these because they stand out from the scape. The main stone here is for those stones. We have a moss problem. As with all regular mosses, we've got weeping moss on the wood. And that weeping moss has started to form these little chunky, bulky structures uh, near the water surface. This little thing here is like also too big. The stem plants are obviously overgrown in the back. The Monte Carlo that falls down from that terrace is a little bit yellowish. The big problem with the mosses on the wood is that they only thrive in the positions where you have light hitting the branches. And then these ferns are also overgrown, so we need the heavy trimming with it. All the detail has disappeared. I don't see any pebbles, so I gotta add back those pebbles later. There's no algae, so I don't need to clean the, the glass for algae, for example, which is obviously a very good point for the maintenance team. The tripartita roots are hanging down, which is usually fine, but right now it's just complicating the scape. It makes it 
a little bit, you know, fuzzy. We need to clean the, uh, the foreground a little bit because it's dirty. It's not as overgrown as I would have thought it is. Another good point to the maintenance team here. But like, for example, that path has disappeared. So I need to like put an end point there because that path should be present. That, that side is cool, but I need to like go deeper into that little cave of plants. I need to trim the ferns, the trident that is on the wood. Other than that, I like how the, the tank has started to become organic. All the plants have blended together nicely, forming a very natural look. So I think uh, I should be done with this within an hour or so, maybe one and a half. It's half past six in the evening right now, and I'll be done by midnight. half past seven. Midnight, yeah, right. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> don't be pessimistic. So without further ado, let's get going. start with the ferns here that come above the water because I can see some yellowing at the bottom. Okay, so in about like 10 minutes I was done with the uh, above the water, the immersed part. It's not perfect. Some mosses didn't feel good at the top part, but the ferns, except that one on the left side, did well. So let's move into the uh, bottom. Ozzy is gonna help me with switching off the filters. Trimming all the big plants that are obstructing the view towards the back, create a graduation. In the complete background, all the plants are going to be at the water surface. My main problem right now is that I don't have the depth of the tank. The stems, when they're too long, they're gonna just grow up to the surface and be horizontal. That doesn't look good, so no horizontal plants, please. Oh, and before I forget, please do not comment that you like the uh, previous version better than the end result, because right now, when I finish, it's not gonna look good. Plants will need time to fill up the space. These mosses are blocking the view. So before I continue, I need to get rid of those mosses. And that's a problem because mosses tend to go everywhere when you trim them. Okay, same problem on the other side. Don't be afraid that you're scaring the fish. They will not come here if they're afraid. They're gonna hide on the other side of the tank. Already I can see through much, much better. I'm going to list all the plants in the description as usual, guys. So if you're interested, you will see the complete plant list in the description. Check it out. So you know exactly what I'm trimming if you just type in the name of the plant in the Green Aqua search box. GreenAqua.com search box. I like to use the ADA scissors. They are very easy to use and they kind of work perfectly. I love these tools. How much time did we spend on the background on this little small portion? Half an hour. It's impossible to be ready in one and a half hours. I can already see. to Anubias Nana Pinto here. It's a little bit yellowish, so it's gonna look good there in the background. Just want to create a cave like that. See, much better. You could just free up these plants, put them back behind that wood. The problem with the microzoom is that it will not float up to the surface. So what you need to do is to continuously clean. Otherwise it's gonna just rot there and get brownish. See, that's what I'm talking about. You don't want to see these. This is an Anubias Nana. And this will go at the end of this structure. What is this? 
it under the rug. <laughs> yeah, sweep it under the rug. <laughs> what the hell? Wow. I'm gonna take this out. I'm telling you what this is, Tenellus. We don't need Tenellus there, it's just growing out like crazy. It looks very untidy. Now this Bucephalandra has some deficiencies. And when I take a little bit of water out, I'm going to be able to trim it. You could reuse all these plants, especially the stem plants. drain a little bit of water now to be able to reach towards the bottom and in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm gonna suck out all the uh, small plantlets that are floating everywhere so I'm gonna make it a little bit cleaner I'm freeing up this path can you see that it makes this whole thing a little bit more open much better Okay, now that I'm here, I'm going to take this out. Don't know what this does here. It's a big mistake. Okay, same problem with this stone here. Don't know why I use these. These are completely different stones. Well, some of the sinkless are hiding here. So I gotta be careful, because these guys can come in. Dirty sand is a big problem. It would make this whole thing very unnatural. Also, these gray stones has to go. They all have to be taken out. They don't match. And they might be replaced with some Frodo stones. This is a small crypt, the Lutea Hobbit. I can plant that in the foreground or somewhere where I need plants in the shade. Bucephalandra green, I have quite a few in the tank, doing quite well. So this is just going to fill up some spaces that are not working properly. This is ruining, this wood piece is ruining everything. Bet you didn't see that before. Me working with this tool underwater, what would I do for maintenance, right? <laughs> Everything. Oh, there's a big mess right in the center. Overgrown, all kinds of plants growing one on top of the other. That is the focus point of the background. So this definitely needs to be very white and clean. This sand path was never cleaned. Bolitis. How did that got there? In the previous video about aquascaping psychology and the flow, I mentioned that the instant feedback is very important. That's also something that I did. I added some Anubias in the back there and I don't like it. So I need to replace it with something thinner, smaller, or maybe not replace it, just put something smaller right next to it to add some detail to that path there. So I decided to add some wavy green Bucephalandra, the same ones that I used. See, it's much better. It added a little bit of detail to this whole part here. That is also a gray one there. I also don't like that. This is killing me. Cover it with some plant or... Uh, Cover it with something? With some plant. 
There's no plant that would cover this. It's gray. Who put that there? Let's check the old video and see what happens there. That's Victor helping me with the mosses. I know Victor did this to me. To tie moss on these and then the moss has dissolved. Let's blame others. Should I try some red bucephalandra like Katagong? <laughs> there you go, <laughs> right? <laughs> it disappeared, problem solved. This is not very sexy here. You just put it there. Okay, so the glue is visible there. I would need to attach a moss. I'm gonna stop this so that I can Tell you the following after it's 10 o'clock what did i say when did we start i don't 6 30 6 30 so three and a half hours but i had the greatest time i i lost sense of time this is the last point of the flow feeling and the aquarium is ready actually it's not completely ready you're gonna see it ready within a week or so so by the time that this video ends in a couple of seconds you're gonna see the end result so don't go anywhere but before I leave you with these images I want to just tell you to subscribe to the Green Aqua YouTube channel if you didn't do so yet hit that bell button to get notified of your future uploads and also please don't forget that we have a membership you can support the video production of this great team all right we'll see you next week goodbye And I'm starting the water. And I'm starting the filter. I cannot reach, but I'll start the filters. I start the skimmers. I'll make sure that no plants will get loose. And I just sit back and relax for a couple of minutes, even though the water is a little bit cloudy. That's what I'm gonna do.